Well, we're going to be joined by uh, Martin Amis very shortly, who's uh, just getting to the studio in New York. His novel, novels, of course, memorably documented some of the cultural excesses of the Thatcher era. But here in the studio, we have Charles Moore, columnist, former editor of the Daily Telegraph, who's been working on the authorised biography of Baroness Thatcher for years and years. And the first volume will be published, uh, what, straight after her funeral? I very think. soon after, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, you're going to have, well, you've had access to all her papers, haven't you? Yes, the personal papers and the government papers, yeah. Can we just deal with that, first of all, this question of how she felt at the, at the end about what had happened to her? Because in that bit of interview there, she sounded to me to be still pretty cross and pretty bitter about it. Did she remain bitter to the end? She, she I think she remained very upset, at least, um, because her point was that she'd always won and... Um, I asked her once, uh, what are you going to call your memoirs when she was writing them? Um, and she said, undefeated. And the reason she said that was because she was undefeated, not only in all the general elections, but even in the leadership election which forced her to resign, she got more votes than Michael Heseltine, who opposed her. Not, just not quite enough to, to prevent the second ballot. And so she had never, ever lost. And so she felt, uh, you know, I have achieved these things, and yet they're getting rid of me and it's it's not fair and it's not right and there's an element of treachery about it now you know as a, we harden political analysts Jeremy would say well you know that's the way politics is but I think when you've been through mm. so much and done so much it's hard to it's hard to come to terms with okay well let's talk a little bit about uh, what she did to Britain but uh, we're joined now by Martin Amis uh, who's in New York I hope you can hear me Martin um, I can good what do you think she did to Britain Margaret Thatcher. <clears throat> well, I, um, she she destroyed the class system from both ends, from above and from below. For, um, she detached the Conservative Party from the aristocracy by hiring all those Keiths and Normans and Cecils, who wouldn't have got in otherwise. And she turned uh, the trade unions or the working class against itself, um, and very much weakened that sector too. But, uh, I mean, people like Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, and I no doubt David Cameron, think she's the greatest Prime Minister since Churchill. And she certainly did uh, upend the whole society. She had a seismic effect on England. Um, let's look at a couple of your characters. Look at someone like John Self, or someone like Lionel Asbo. Are these characters that could really have existed before the Thatcher changes? Um, uh, yes, I think they could. I, I mean, I don't think she affected fiction except to be called Mrs. Torture by Salman Rushdie. Um, I mean, I, I found her, um, she rubbed me up the wrong way, something rotten as a, as a human being. Um, and I didn't like her emphasis on, you know, market state acquisitiveness exactly. and individualism, um, anti-collectivism of all kinds. But, um, but I think she was a necessary Prime Minister. This accusation, and, uh, Charles, let me just bring in Charles Moore, who's uh, written her biography, which is just about to come out, uh, the, Martin, if I may. Um, this accusation that somehow life in Britain was coarsened hmm. by the liberating of people, making it, as it were, respectable to become selfish, mm -hmm. to look after yourself, uh, would be a polite way of putting it. What, how do you react to that? Well, I think that is largely a misunderstanding. I think you have to remember that the reason she won in 1979 was that people were so sick of the selfishness, the collective selfishness of trade union leaders. Uh, and they really wanted something where such people were not holding the country to ransom uh, and preventing working people from getting on. So it wasn't sort of um, posh people like Martin who were, um, who were rooting for her. It was, um, you know, the Luton car worker. And I must say, I think... Um, uh, Martin's father, Kingsley, was more alert to what was really happening here than, than Martin uh, was at the time, at least. Um, I think the intellectuals, as is so often the case, um, the clever people were wrong and the stupid people were right. Um, the, the, they had seen what Mrs. Sa how she was a radical force and a force for change and uh, an anti-establishment force. And I think it's very fitting that her own university, uh, Oxford, refused for an honorary degree because that just shows how little those people understood about what she meant. This incredible insult to the first woman uh, who's the graduate of that university. And 
it, that shows what a challenge she was to those people and, you know, a necessary challenge. Uh, it's quite late in the evening uh, here, Martin, so <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have to f put up with Charles Moore's <laughs> <laughs> conversational gambits at this time. <laughs> uh, but, OK, basically, you, you, you misunderstood uh, what she was about. I don't think so. I said she was a necessary prime minister. Um, do you remember Paul Johnson's influential piece, uh, A Brotherhood of National Misery? I think uh, England was traveling in that direction, and um, it, it was a, a time of, of, of class war, and you felt it 20 times a day, that you were much resented from beneath and, and much patronized from above. And she did flatten it out in, in terms of class. Well, then, why has she left this bitterly divided legacy? But people, some people who are saying that she was virtually a secular saint and others saying she was the most destructive politician ever unleashed on this country. <coughs> well, her, her main legacy, it's been said, is Tony Blair. Um, and now everyone uh, is cleaving to the centre, uh, mm. partly in reaction to... It was a, a very violent time in England. And, um, you know, no, no one wants to be a, uh, a conviction politician anymore. Um, and, the, and society isn't a, a, a uh, well, she tending... Was a, she was a conviction politician, That's wasn't she? she? Yes, uh, she was. Teddy Blair's something um, to have on your conscience, isn't it, Charles Moore? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th I think one thing that's important to bear in mind, which came out very well in some of your film, was her enormous global impact. Uh, and this is part of her skill as somebody who conveys and embodies a message. So that um, she is the message, the, the handbag, the hair... Um, going with the ideas, um, the reaching out, the idea of freedom being an aggressive force in the world rather than one that's in retreat. Uh, and that, I find, that pick, picked up literally all over the world and much mm. appreciated. And, um, Let me just ask Martin Amos yeah. something. Um, Martin Amos, how do you think she still influences 2013 now? Um, I, think, I think she was never loved. And, in fact, it wasn't her first victory despite a 19% deficit in personal approval. Um, and she never allied herself to the feminist cause. Her only gesture of solidarity, funnily enough, was when she threatened to go to Leeds to take over the investigation into the Yorkshire Ripper case. Um, I think that, that um, she, she, she has not been taken up by the feminists because she's so masculine. And uh, politician after politician said that they never felt they were with, with a woman. Uh, despite, her, despite the little scent of Chanel and the occasional refreshing little weeps she used to indulge in. Um, That's Mit Mitterrand said she had the eyes of Caligula and the mouth of Marilyn Monroe. Um, Arafat said she wasn't the Iron Lady, she was the Iron Man. Um, <laughs> right, come on. Uh, Charles she, Moore, she, uh, 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 really, he could, Martin couldn't be more wrong about that. I mean, um, uh, she, and it's very clear, particularly if you watch it on film, that, I mean, I didn't notice it at the time because I'm younger than her, so it wouldn't sort of work for me particularly. Um, Mrs. Thatcher was a, considered a very attractive woman and was very conscious of that. And her relationships, particularly with other world statesmen, are very much to do with her personal chemistry. Not, nothing sort of improper, but nevertheless a sexual or flirtatious yeah. element in it. And that's why she, one of the reasons she likes Reagan, she likes Gorbachev, and she likes Mitterrand, but doesn't like Helmut Kohl because he's a great big blobby chap. <laughs> and um, and uh, the, the, the chemistry is there, and so is the woman's capacity in a man's world to change all the rules. Yeah. And as Alan Clark once said, to jump the tracks in conversation, so okay. that um, you never, uh, you never yeah. know what she's going to do next. She, okay. she knew that, she played on it, she did it brilliantly. Thank you both very much. Uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, more tomorrow night at the usual time, but until then, good night.